One of the most significant changes to the pension scheme over the last 10 to 15 years has been the change in the ages at which you can get it started. And it's led to some confusion over exactly what pension you can take and more importantly, when you can take it. So let me see if I can help you out with this one in regard to the teacher's pension scheme. In the final salary scheme, before 2007, it was 60. After 2007, it became 65. And with the introduction of the career average pension scheme, it has risen to match your state pension age. Now this can lead obviously to confusion, not least because there are three different schemes. Each scheme is separate and is not affected by other schemes, normal pension ages. So if you started before 2007, then you're in the final salary scheme that has a normal pension age of 60. It doesn't suddenly change to 65 just because you've carried on working after 2007. And similarly, if you started between 2007 and April 2015, then you will be in the final salary scheme that has a normal pension age of 65. And if you started April 2015 onwards, then you're in the career average scheme where your pension age is the same as your state pension age. At this point, it is worth noting that only the career average scheme does not have an actual age written with it. It refers to your state pension age and not actually a number. Now this is important and I will explain that later. Now I will mention the McLeod judgment at this point, um, but as this isn't the focus of this video, I won't go into it fully. If you want more detail, take a look at one of my other videos where I, I explain about McLeod and the, the implications for teachers more fully. The career average scheme was first introduced on the 1st of April 2015 and the plan was for everyone to be moved on to this scheme. That plan was fought against and instead a gradual change was used with everyone moving at some point in time between then and the 31st of March 2022. Now later this was proved to be an illegal move and so the current situation is that this period between 2015 and 2022, the transition period, is called the remedy. It's a period where most teachers will get to choose which scheme they want it counted in. However, that's not what I'm looking at right now. I mention it just to be clear that you can be in more than one pension scheme and therefore have different pension ages for the different parts. The three schemes are the final salary scheme for those who started before 2007, the final salary scheme for those who started between 2007 and April 2015, and the career average scheme that's been around since April 2015. Now the first final salary scheme has a normal pension age of 60, the second final salary scheme has a normal pension age of 65, and the career average scheme has its normal pension age which is the same as your state pension age. And this is where we start to see the different approach. The state pension age has changed. It depends on how old you are now. So for some people it's 65, for others 66, some 67, and a lot 68. And while 68 is currently the oldest, there's no guarantee it's gonna stay at that age. The state pension age, this rise in the state pension age, was introduced and changed with the Finance Act of 2022. And this act also put in place changes to the minimum pension age. It did so through paragraphs like this one, and this paragraph that describes when and at what time the minimum pension age will change. It is the last of these sentences that raises the minimum pension age to 57 on the 6th of April 2028. And this is the one that clearly has got everybody most concerned. But hang on, whilst the minimum age is rising to 57, it's not the only thing in the Act that relates to the teacher's pension scheme and others, but the teacher's one is what I'm focusing on. Later on in the Act is this paragraph that defines something called a protected pension age. And if we take a closer look at part three, we can see that as long as someone had the right to take the pension earlier than 57 on the 4th of November 2021, that's the cutoff date, then they will benefit from being a protected pension age. So did teachers have this right before November 2021? Well, 
To be in one of the final salary schemes, you must have started before 2021. And in fact, you would have had to have started teaching before 2015, because after 2015, everybody went into the career average scheme. So this doesn't apply. So if you have a final salary pension, then your final salary pension has this protected age status. And this is because of the way the teacher's pension regulations are written. To see this, we can look at the regulations themselves. And here we see that a pre-2007 entrant to the scheme has a normal pension age of 60. The key point here is the one I mentioned at the beginning of this video. It is an actual number that is written. You see the 60 in the paragraph. And this is what triggers that entitlement for the scheme to get protected age status. Later on in the same document, we see more references to the normal pension ages under the different schemes. And so where the ages are written as numbers, that indicates that we have a protected age scheme. But that refers to the normal pension age. What about the minimum pension age, which is currently 55? Well, we go a little bit further into the document, into the regulations, and we find this section on early retirement. And the entitlement to take early pension is also written as a number, as 55. And so this is also a protected age of the final salary schemes. And what this means is that the final scanner screams have protected age status because the ages of 60 and 65 for the normal pension age and the earliest access age of 55 are written into the regulations. And so they will be respected in the future, barring any changes in legislation that the government might come up with. And so the raising of the state pension age to 67, 68, etc., and the minimum age to 57 and 58 can be ignored for the final salary schemes. However, the career average scheme is different. The ages at which the pension can be taken in this scheme are not written as numbers. Notice there are no numbers in this scheme. The definition of these terms is by reference to the Finance Act of 2004, but the Finance Act of 2004 was the one that was rewritten in part by the Finance Act of 2022, where they altered the age to rise to raise the pension age to 67 and the minimum pension age to 57, as from April 2028. So, in summary, we have the two final salary schemes and the career average scheme. The normal pension age, the age at which you can take the unreduced pension is 60 for the pre-2007 scheme and the earliest access age is 55. And for the 2007 to 2015 final salary scheme, those ages are 65 for the full unreduced pension and again 55 for the minimum pension age. Those ages are protected. So they won't change unless there is another act of parliament to override that law as well. That's unlikely as it would mean retrospectively changing a contract where the workers who have paid for that contract have already delivered their part of the, of the, the contract and the deal. So unlikely that those will change. And so to the career average scheme. Up to the 5th of April, the normal pension age will match the teacher's state pension age. And the earliest age at which the reduced pension can be taken is also 55. But from the 6th of April 2028, this changes. The normal pension age is still the teacher's state pension age, but the earliest age that they can access the pension is going to change to 57. And then at some point in the future, not actually been cleared up yet and announced, whilst the normal age continues to match the state pension age, the earliest access is going to rise to 58. The aim being for the earliest pension age, the minimum age, to track 10 years behind that state pension age. So the final salary schemes are protected, whereas the career average schemes, the ages that you can access that, can be changed by the government. So as a teacher, you're probably gonna be in a couple of these schemes. Certainly if you started before 2015, 
you will have some final salary. And if you've carried on after 2022 or 2015, you're going to have some career average. And these are treated separately. So if you've got a final salary scheme pension that finished in essence on the 31st of March 2022, unless you go for the McLeod option, but we'll leave that to one side. Let's say you carried it on through to the end of March 2022. You're always going to be able to take that pension from either 60 or 65, depending on when you started. But you can always get access to either of those schemes from the age of 55, the earliest pension age. The career average pension, on the other hand, depends on how old you are on the key dates of the 6th of April 2028. If you're 55 before the 6th of April 2028, then you can take the career average pension at and after the age of 55. If you're not 55 until later than the 5th of April 2028, then you're going to have to wait to 57 to get that part of your pension. You can always take the final salary part at 55, but you're going to have to wait for the career average one until some point after that. And if you're a much younger teacher, I'm afraid you have to keep your eyes out to what's happening with the raising of the state pension age to 58, sorry, to 68, and the early access age to 58. That is probably coming sometime in the 2030s.